Hello dear friends, I am Dr. Harish Malpani and my today's topic is monoclonal antibody. This topic is useful for undergraduate and postgraduate students of life sciences like microbiology, biotechnology, biochemistry, uh, zoology. Uh, it might be uh, included in the syllabus of pharmacy and medical student. So what we are going to discuss in this particular topic today is first of all we are going to talk about antigen then we will discussing epitope concept of monoclonal antibody its production and application so before directly moving toward our main topic that monoclonal antibody we need to understand what antigen are there are various uh, generalized definition of antigen are there or vague definition of antigen are there we can say but specific definition of antigen is substance that can be recognized by immunoglobulin receptor of B cell or T cell receptor when combined with MSC are called as antigen. Actually, we need to discuss uh, differences in between immunogenicity and antigenicity also because sometimes uh, people uh, consider that immunogenicity and antigenicity are synonym but that are not same actually. Immunogenic property that sometimes are confused with that of antigenic properties. Immunogenicity is the ability to induce humoral or cell mediated immune response while antigenicity is the ability to combine specifically with the final product of these responses that is antibodies or cell receptors. So although substance that induces specific immune response is usually called as antigen but more precisely or appropriately it should be called as immunogen. So we need to understand Although all molecules that have property of immunogenicity also have the property of antigenicity but reverse is not same or reverse is not true. We need to uh, take example of haptins. Uh, haptins are small uh, molecule that are antigenic but they are not immunogenic. They are incapable of inducing specific immune response. So after knowing these basic things about antigen we need to understand what epitopes are. Actually in this particular diagram you can see uh, there are certain uh, outgrowth like structures are uh, shown and that structures are epitopes. Actually antigen which is generally very large and complex are not recognized in their entire by lymphocytes means whole antigen cannot be uh, recognized by lymphocytes. Instead both B and T lymphocyte recognize particular site of that antigen and that particular sites are called as antigenic determinants or epitopes. So an epitope is that part of antigen that is being recognized by immune system. The region that actually bind to B and T cell receptor that are what uh, epitopes are. So in this particular diagram you can see on antigen there are certain epitopes three types three epitopes are uh, shown here where specifically antibodies are binding. So region of antibody that is binding to epitope is known as paratope. We already know that. So uh, before moving towards uh, um, again monoclonal antibody we need to understand what antibodies are actually or what is polyclonal antibody so as we know most of antigen are having multiple epitopes and therefore induce proliferation and differentiation of variety of b cell clones each derived from b cell that recognize a particular epitope the resulting serum antibodies are heterogeneous compromising mixture of antibodies such a polyclonal antibody response facilitates the localization phagocytosis complement mediated lysis of antigen. It is thus have clear advantage for the organism in vivo. Unfortunately, this antibody heterogeneity increases immune protection in vivo, but same uh, heterogeneity of this antibody or polyclonal antibody cannot be useful in vitro uses. For example, uh, in research and diagnostic purposes we need monoclonal antibody. Monoclonal antibody derived from single clone and thus specific for single epitope. So what is definition of monoclonal antibody? Mono means one and clone we already know. So monoclonal antibodies are identical immunoglobulin generated from single B cell clone. This, immuno, uh, this antibodies recognize a unique epitope or binding sites on one single antigen. So, friends, we have to understand that the monoclonal antibody is identical. The monoclonal antibody is identical to each other and identical to each other. And where is it generated? Single B-cell clones. 
और वो एक पर्टिकुलर इपिटोप को ही बाइंड होगी एंटीजन के किसी एक ही इपिटोप को बाइंड होगी जिसको हमको कहना है मोनोक्लोनल एंटीबॉडी सो वट दिस मोनोक्लोनल एंटीबॉडी एक्चुअली प्रोड्यूस और वट इज हिस्ट्री ऑफ दिस मोनोक्लोनल एंटीबॉडी सो दिस मोनोक्लोनल एंटीबॉडी स्टार्टेड इन द ईयर कंसेप्ट ऑफ मोनोक्लोनल एंटीबॉडी स्टार्टेड इन द ईयर नाइनटीन सेवेंटी फाइव जॉर्ज कोहलर एंड सीजर मिलस्टेन डिवाइस अ मेथड फॉर प्रिपरेशन ऑफ मोनोक्लोनल एंटीबॉडी दिस मेथड क्विकली बिकम वन ऑफ द इम्यूनोलॉजिकल स्की टेक्निक वॉट हैपन इन दिस पर्टिकुलर मेथड हियर नॉर्मल एक्टिवेटेड एंटीबॉडी प्रोड्यूसिंग बी सेल आर फ्यूज विथ माइलेमा सेल्स दे वर एबल टू जनरेट हाइब्रिड हाइब्रिड बाई फ्यूजन ऑफ बी सेल विद दैट ऑफ माइलोमा सेल जनरेट हाइब्रिड सेल कॉल्ड हाइब्रिडोमा दैट प्रोजेस इमोर्टल ग्रोथ प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द माइलोमा सेल एंड सिक्रिटेड एंटीबॉडी प्रोड्यूस बाय बी सेल द रिजल्टिंग क्लोन्स ऑफ हाइब्रिडोमा सेल विच सिक्रिएट लार्ज क्वांटिटीज ऑफ मोनोक्लोन एंटीबॉडी कैन बी कल्चर्ड इन डेफिनेटली एंड फॉर दिस एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डिनरी वर्क दिस टू साइंटिस्ट हैव बीन अवॉर्डेड विद नोबेल प्राइज सो in diagram you can see there is one antigen that antigen is having in this diagram that antigen is uh, have to show uh, shown four uh, epitopes and that uh, antigen is being injected in mice in normal procedure what happen when that antigen will be injected into the mice we will isolate serum and that serum will be having polyclonal antibodies as there are four epitopes so you can say uh, uh, antibody which is having uh, ab1 ab2 ab3 ab4 as shown in diagram but in case of monoclonal antibody what happen when this antigen is injected into the mice spleen cells of that mice have been isolated and from that spleen cells as uh, in diagram you can say there are four different types of plasma cells are shown 1 2 3 4 and that plasma cells are being fused with myeloma cells and it will lead to form hybrid uh, hybridoma cells and that hybridoma cells are then isolated with each other and they are grown separately and then we will be having a monoclonal antibody so what procedure of monoclonal antibody uh, is there exactly how this uh, monoclonal antibodies are being produced that we are also going to discuss now so how to make monoclonal antibodies monoclonal antibody generation begin exactly in the same manner as polyclonal antibody generation with creation of vigorous immune response as we already know in monoclonal antibody as well as in polyclonal antibody we will get vigorous immune response however rather than collecting host serum to recover population of polyclonal antibody in monoclonal antibody generation require collection of the cells that make antibodies means in polyclonal antibody we will be collecting a serum but in monoclonal antibody what we need to collect we need to collect cells that makes antibodies and that cells are called as lymphocytes so these lymphocytes once harvested are immortalized established as clonal through limiting dilutions screen for appropriate expression so there are total five steps in the production of monoclonal antibody one by one we are going to discuss all five steps first step is lymphocyte harvest so in this particular steps monoclonal antibody production require the collection of antibody producing cell found in the spleens or lymph node so whatever organism we are using for example if you are using mice so from mice we need to isolate that particular type of cells lymphocytic cells second is fusion to create hybridoma cells so as spleen cells have limited survival time in culture they require to fuse with myeloma cells spleen cell have one uh, uh, problem that they will get uh, died soon they are short lived and that's why the spleen cells uh, are needed to be fused with myeloma cell to create immortalized hybridized uh, hybrid that can undergo many passages in vitro this is achieved through pg pg is polyethylene glycol or uh, it can be done by electric impulses uh, which will disturb cell membrane and it will allow two cell membrane to join with each other so that is what second step first step is lymphocyte harvest and second stage is fusion to create hybridoma cell now this third cell is quite important and it is something tricky to understand we need to focus right uh, now so selecting for fuse hybrids see what happen here hybridoma selection after fusion of myelomas and spleen cell is critical step in monoclonal antibody production often scientists use hat hat method hat method to accomplish this task during the fusion process three types of cells are present 
first is unfused myeloma cell that are deficient of enzyme hgprt second is unfused spleen cell and third is fused hybridoma cell so see we are interested in fused hybridoma cell but we are having mixed population of unfused myeloma cell uh, then unfused spleen cell and we are having fused hybridoma cell so we need to remove first two types of cells so unfused spleen cells are easily selected against uh, since they do not replicate in culture while unfused myeloma cell can be selected against using media containing hat the aminopterin found in the medium block the de novo dna nucleotide synthesis pathway we you already know what de novo synthesis is so typically when de novo pathway is blocked cell will utilize other pathway that is salvage pathway as an alternative means to replicate only if hypoxanthine and thymidine are present however these myelomas are unable to do so since they are deficient of enzyme hgprt so here hgprt is essential and hgprt is missing in unfused myeloma cells so that's why they will not able to replicate they will not able to grow only hybridoma will survive hybridoma inherit functioning hgprt enzyme from spleen cell so even though de novo pathway is blocked they can still have salvage pathway to replicate so in this diagram you can see there are two types of cell yellow color is b cell and red color is myeloma cell so after fusing we are having mixture and that mixture is grown on hat medium so only hybridoma cell will grow there and it will not allow growth of unfused spleen cell and uh, unfused myeloma cell so this is third step now fourth step is reaching clonality with limiting dilutions the population of cell which survive uh, here its selection is still heterogeneous containing multiple clones specific to the target antigen and clones producing antibodies with ir irrelevant specificity single cells are required to assure clonality and achieve through limiting dilutions and after the serial uh, after number of dilutions we will be having that particular kind of cell so last uh, step is expansion cryopreservation production and purification so after reaching uh, monoclonal status successful performance is screen assayed uh, selected hybridomas are ex uh, expanded and frozen down in stock for safeguard and preservation so this is all the method of monoclonal antibody i hope you understand how monoclonal antibodies are being produced last uh, topic of this particular uh, presentation is application of monoclonal antibody why we are discussing so many things about monoclonal antibody because of its wide applications so here i am going to discuss very few applications but there are several applications first application of monoclonal antibody is it is used in diagnostic testing once monoclonal antibodies are produced for a specific substance they can be used to test presence of that substance in vessel this can uh, include toxins drugs hormones uh, it is already established that this monoclonal antibody uh, can be used uh, against uh, snake venom or snake bites the snake bites then it is having application in pregnancy testing then it is having application in radio immuno detection for cancer and imaging technique used to detect presence of cancerous or cancer specific cell has been developed deploying radio label antibodies which can be produced as monoclonal antibodies fourth is radio immunotherapy for cancer similar to rid rit uses monoclonal antibody to specifically target antigen cell that are associated with tumors and then blast this lethal dose of radiation because of which what will happen um, uh, other cells normal cells will be having less level of radiation and that is application of monoclonal antibody then viral disease treatment doctors hope that further research into monoclonal antibody and increased knowledge of their properties treatment will become available for diseases previously previously thought to be incurable like aids and right now there is a covid 19 outbreak so in that also uh, monoclonal antibody uh, production Uh, for fighting against covid is in pipeline then uh, sixth application is identification of pathogen monoclonal antibodies can now be used uh, uh, for identification of particular microorganism for example it is mainly used for the nigeria ganuri then tracing specific cell and their functions this is very interesting 
scientists can use monoclonal antibodies to first identify and then track certain cells that too in a body certain cells or molecule in living thing and determine its function for example scientists at university of oregon are using such practices to determine which protein are responsible for differentiation among the cells in the respiratory system last application of monoclonal antibody in this presentation is it can be used as a direct therapeutic agent yes in passive immunity directly antibodies are administered so monoclonal antibody can be directly used for enhancing immune function of the host direct use of monoclonal antibody causes minimal toxicity and target tissue so i hope you understood this concept uh, these are my references for this particular presentation i hope you all enjoyed this uh, lecture if you like it please like uh, comment and subscribe thank you thank you very much